Okay, so in this video, we will look at a few examples where we will simplify the cube root of an integer. And since the cube root is the inverse function of the cube function, to cancel the cube root, we have to have a perfect cube. So the idea is to factor the given integer so as to locate some of the factors as perfect cube. And those will cancel the uh, cube root. And in the end, we will have the cube root on the smallest possible integer. Let's start with a very simple example, say the cube root of 8. Well, the answer is clearly 2, since 2 cubed is equal to 8. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. So when you ask for the cube root of 8, you're asking for some number whose cubed will equal 8. And again, you can verify this if you say, well, what is the cube root of 8? Well, if x is the cube root of 8, right, we have an equality. So as long as we do the same thing on both sides, we will preserve the equality. So let's cube both sides. So if x is the cube root of 8, then x cubed will equal the cube of the cube root of 8. And now there's two ways to view this. By definition, the cube is the inverse of the cube root. So these will cancel, and you'll be left with 8. You can also view the cube root as an exponent of 1 third. And now we have a double exponentiation. When you double exponentiate, you can combine the exponents by multiplying them. So this will be 8 to the 3 times 1 third. But 3 times a third is 1, and so we get 8, as expected. So you see that if x is the cube root of 8, then x cubed must be 8. Therefore, if x cubed is 8, well, x must be 2. And here's how we will think of it in our next few examples. So if x is the cube root of 8, and again, thinking of the cube root as the inverse of the cube function, we will simply rewrite 8 as 2 cubed. So if you take 2, cube it, then it gets cube root. Well, these two operations are inverse of each other, so they cancel. And you're left, of course, with 2. So clearly, the cube root of 8 is 2. You can also view this in exponent form. right? You could also say, well, I have 2 cubed. And the cube root is a, an exponent of 1 third. And now we're right back to this case. Double exponentiation, multiply the exponents. 2 to the 3 times 1 third. So which is 2 to the 1, which is 2. But for us, it really is here the simplest way of thinking about this. To hopefully cancel the cube root, what is inside has to be a perfect cube. And then the cube cancels the cube root, and you're left with a given integer. So let's look now at two less trivial examples. What if we ask to simplify the cube root, say, of 56? Well, thinking of factoring 56, 56 is 8 times 7. Seven is not a perfect cube, but eight is. So we have the cube root of eight times seven, but eight is two cubed times seven. We have a cube root over a product we can distribute. So this is the cube root of the first term, two cubed, times the cube root of the second term, seven. So in the end, well, the cube root of a cube, these two cancel. And we're left with 2 times the cube root of 7. And so in this way, we have the cube root of a much smaller integer. What about the cube root, say, of 108? Well, again, let's try and factor 108. And hopefully, we'll get one or two factors as perfect cubes. Well, one obvious factor of 108 is 2, as 108 is even. So if we factor 2 from his, 108 is 2 times 54. 
but 54 again is an even number. So we can also factor 2 from this again. So I have the cube root of 2 times 2 is 4. And if you factor 2 from 54, well, you get 27. That's 2 times 27 is 54. And this is interesting now because 27, of course, is a perfect cube. It is 3 cubed. So we have 4 times 3 cubed. And now we will distribute the cube root on both terms. So the cube root of 3 cubed will give us a 3 times the cube root of 4 will stay cube root of 4 as 4 is not a perfect cube. So once again we have simplified from the cube root of 108 to 3 times the cube root of 4. A much simpler expression. And that's it.